Hi everyone and welcome back to this channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how to learn new study material for the first time. So let me tell you a little bit about the structure of this video. It's going to contain some of the methods that we follow usually in school and are they actually effective in reality? And then how to create a mind map to learn everything new for the first time. And it will also contain some of the books which have helped me figure out this process much better. Okay, so what exactly are the usual techniques that most students follow? Including me, I'm guilty as charged because I did do the same thing until I came to know the right method, okay? You know, what I used to do is, or what most of us do is, we read a topic, highlight the important lines, but guess what? Research suggests that highlighting is not as effective and making new notes of your own can be quite time consuming. So how did I know all of this? Well, I came across some research papers in PubMed, okay? And now, I know, since I'm a nerd and I like reading about various things, I think Audible and Google has kind of figured out my interests and it recommends me books and websites and topics to read on my feed. Um, so the two books mainly which I read were Make It Stick by the author Peter Brown. Okay, it's a short read. Apart from that, the other book was The Science of Self-Learning by Peter Hollitz. And these books will actually teach you how to teach yourself anything and also how to learn more in less time and direct sort of, you know, your own education. And so I think they are fantastic and I will link them below if you want. Now, since reading these books, I've actually started following some of the suggestions and I feel like it definitely helps me in remembering things much better. And this is the reason why I act I'm actually making a video because so many people keep asking me, oh, how do I study for this? How do I study for that? And I think using these techniques will definitely help you, okay? Now, since this is your first reading, you can make your own notes or read up straight up from the textbook or whatever is your choice. There's also another option which a lot of people use, which is the Anki flashcards, where you can actually make your own flashcards from whatever you need, sort of kind of a... A digital note-taking app or a software which helps you in you know uh, remembering stuff at a certain interval of time and I think it's free on the computer if you are on the phone you might have to pay up a little bit okay so the bottom line is you don't really need to create your own notes okay so this is one thing which most people or many people are trying to do these days and you shouldn't be doing because it's going to waste a lot of time According to me, if you already have some notes from seniors or something, just find those notes from wherever you want and use them, okay? In this world where internet is the king of everything, you can find some online notes. And this is because even after you write those in-depth, colorful, pretty notes, the probability of you remembering more than 20% of the subject matter beyond a week is very low. So stop wasting time. Yeah, because you would end up rereading the whole thing again and that just wastes more time. Instead, let me show you how to build a mind map so that everything is in your brain and <laughs> not just on your notes, okay? So when you start reading a new subject, okay, don't just go and study the page right away, okay? Because it can get overwhelming. Okay, so how you start is start from the index. So let's say it's the anatomy of the head and neck. It's going to be the anatomy of the brain, of the facial structures, of the maxilla, mandible, of the internal structures, the blood supply, the nervous supply. You know, identify what all topics are in there and then eventually go inside the topic. Okay, this will actually create different connections in your brain. Okay, you have to peel the onion little by little. So start in this way. Check the index see the exact contents of the book, okay? So let's say, for example, you want to read the head and neck anatomy. In that, you need to read about, let's say, the cranial nerves. Now, there are 12 cranial nerves, okay? Let's consider you're reading the whole topic about something. For example, you're reading about the trigeminal nerve or the dentist nerve, okay? Now, as you are reading, make up some questions in your mind about the topic, okay? Once you finish reading, question yourself with those questions for each and every paragraph, not just after the end of the topic. For example, if you want to read about the introduction of trigeminal nerve, make up a question in your mind. What am I reading about? Trigeminal nerve or dentist nerve, right? Then you read about a paragraph about the anatomy of the topic. So make up a question, okay, which is where or anatomy, 
Where is it located? Okay, it starts from the brain and extends into the face, right? There are three sensory nuclei and one motor, right? Then the sensory parts join together and exit out as the sensory root, which forms the trigeminal ganglion, which actually separates into three, the ophthalmic, the maxillary, and the mandibular divisions of the trigeminal nerve. That's all there is, right? Then let's say you read about the functions of these nerves. So what's the question? What are, what areas does it supply? What's the functions of these nerves, okay? Answer those. So three senses are connected by this nerve, plus the motor component is actually going to help moving your jaw up and down and lower jaw up and down and chew, right? Then you read about the trauma from injury, tumor, surgery, dental procedures, etc. Then what do you think of a question? Question is, what kind of problems can happen to the trigeminal nerve? Now, it's of course a mixed nerve, so it can either have numbness or it can have facial pain in the area of the affected nerve. Trigeminal nerve problems are called trigeminal neuralgia. Trigeminal is the name, neur, neuralgia, nerve pain. Now, are there any types of trigeminal neuralgia? Yes, there's primary and secondary. Primary is when there's something wrong with the stuff which is already inside your body. That is, there's either an artery or a vein which is coiled around the nerve or, you know, it's in a weird position with the nerve and it's causing problem to the nerve, okay? Causing some kind of irritation to the nerve. The secondary is when there's something extra, like, for example, a cyst or a tumor or some injury which is pressing against the nerve or causing some trauma to the nerve. When you read about the signs of the patient, question yourself, what kind of complaints will the patient have or the signs of the patient? So if it's a uh, type 1 of trigeminal nerve, then remember, it's from the arteries and veins. So it'll be kind of pulsatile. That means it'll be sharp, stabbing. Every time the blood flows through that area, it'll be pulsatile and it'll be continuous. So if it's the type 2 kind of a trigeminal, then it'll be a constant pain because it's because of the tumor or the cyst pressing against the nerve or causing trauma constantly, right? So it'll be a constant gnawing, annoying pain. That, that's how you can differentiate it. When you read about all the tests for trigeminal nerve, question yourself, how do you identify? When the patient have problems, um, how do you diagnose? Diagnosis is based on, you check the patient, physical exam or symptoms, then you do some scans or CT scans, x-rays, MRIs, etc. to check the abnormalities like cysts or tumors and stuff like that, right? Now, when you read the treatment procedures, you question yourself again, how to treat this trigeminal neuralgia? Now, of course, it's a nerve pain. When the patient comes to you with a lot of pain, what would you do first? Treat them for the pain because they're yelling with pain, right? So you give them anticonvulsants. What are anticonvulsants? It will actually reduce the stimulation of the nerve and thus reduce the pain. The, when the nerve is irritated or overstimulated, it will actually constrict the muscles out there, right? So you can also give antispasmodics and Botox injections, which will actually relax the muscles. So, and the next thing, which is the most important, is you treat the cause of the problem. Right? Now, if it's a type 1 where it's a nerve or the artery or, or a vein causing the problem, then you will basically do a microvascular decompression surgery. If it's a type 2 where a cyst or a tumor is affecting, then you would have to remove that tumor surgically. Or sometimes there is something called as rhizotomy, where a part of the nerve fibers, which are hyperactive, are actually destroyed by the surgeon. So. So this is how you basically summarize it after reading each and every paragraph of information about that topic, okay? And after you complete reading the whole thing, ask yourself the same questions again while the book is closed or you're not looking at the book. So you can remember and try to see how much you can recollect, okay? So this is your second recollection. This process is actually called active recall. When you do immediate recall right after you have read something, you maintain almost 100% of the topic in your mind at least for three to four days, okay? Within a week, it's lost by 50%. But if you do active recall at least two times when you're studying, and then once you're done with all of the topics, like for example, you were doing those 12 cranial nerves. Once you're done with all of the cranial nerves, 
then try to recall all of them individually okay that will be your third recall that means you would remember this topic much longer than an average person would if they just read the whole book or they read the whole topic in one go okay now how do you do active recall basically ask yourself those same questions which we formed earlier and see if you can remember everything okay for people who are auditory learners um just vocalizing or saying th something out loud will help you a lot but for those who are maybe visual learners then for you you might actually need to draw some spider diagrams or you know flow charts in order to remember everything okay so at the end of the lesson, either quiz with your own questions or just check if there are any old questions for a topic or an exam. Or the best way is to just discuss the material with some friends and that's how go ahead with it, okay? This will solidify the topic in your mind the first time you do it. Because even though it's the first time, you've had so many recollections with it, right? Now, of course, you know the forgetting curve. Even if you have done this form of recall, you might forget 50% of this topic if you've not revised it in time. So now you need to use the active recall method with spaced repetition. And I will discuss this in a different video as I don't want this video to be too long and too overwhelming. So if you have any study buddies, just share this video with them so that you all can, you know, actually use these strategies to study together, discuss together and help each other score really good high marks, okay? And for those of you, I'm Dr. Sam and I make some interesting videos about dental schools and uh, dental school studies and uh, if you wish to do the same, then make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and until next time adios for now